Welcome back to the channel, my name is Jeremy, and today I want to start off with a story. So when I first moved to Chicago about five years ago, I didn't have any friends or family, and I wanted to start attending a church here. So I googled Churches of Chicago, and I just went to the first one on the list. Now this was around the fall time, so as I got off the bus and I was walking toward the church, I, you know, I saw a bunch of young hipster people with their denim and leather jackets, torn jeans, walking into church. And five years ago, I think I was wearing like a, like a over baggy khakis with like brown dress shoes and a Walmart polo. And as I was walking in, I wasn't just noticing all the beautiful people walking in as well. I started to notice all the coffee cups. And if you know me, you know, usually at church, I sit in the very back of the church. And if there's a balcony, that's where your boy's at. I'm at the very top, at the very back. And from that point of view, I, I could see sprinkled throughout the congregation, all the people with their coffee cups. And this instantly got to me. Even as I found a home church and I started playing drums there, from the vantage point of a drummer, you can see it, the whole congregation. You can see everybody walking in. And, and as I was sitting in the drum cage, I could just see all the people who were sitting there with their coffee cups. And every time I saw that, I would think to myself, what is this, a show? Like, do you think you're at like some social event where you can sit down, kick back, relax, and drink your latte? Like, do you know why we're here? Do you know who is here? Do you know what we are here to do? Do you realize what is happening here? When we go to church, are we attending a show where some of the best looking people in the city with the best fashion sense come up on stage and sing us some well-written songs as they like shoot some lasers and lights through the smoke and then of course the pastor comes up with his perfect haircut and trophy wife walks up with his Gucci shoes gives us his motivational speech and then we just clap and sip our lattes as if they were there to entertain us growing up in a conservative traditional Christian setting when we went to church we dressed up the men showed up in suits and ties, and the women showed up in dresses. And we even left our shoes outside of the door before we walked in. An example set in the Old Testament when God told Moses to take off his sandals because where he was standing was holy ground. And when we read about our God in the Old Testament, we read that the Israelites created a tabernacle for God. Now the tabernacle was a huge tent separated into three sections. The first section was the outer court where all the Jewish men could gather. The second section was the holy place where only priests could enter. And then the last section was the Holy of Holies where God himself would be. And in that Holy of Holies area of the tabernacle, God himself would come and dwell in that area. And once a year, only the high priest could enter in there to talk to God. If any other priest were to attempt to enter into the Holy of Holies, they would be consumed with fire. So when the high priest entered in there once a year, and for whatever reason, if God was not pleased with the children of Israel, he would strike that priest dead. And so because of this, the high priest would enter in with a chain around his ankle as well as some bells. And so the other priest would be listening on the other side of the veil. And if the bells were to stop ringing to prevent themselves from going in there and being consumed, they would drag the priest out by the chain. Now that's some pretty intense stuff. So when Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says that that veil that separated the holy place from the holy of holies was ripped from top to bottom as if God was saying, I no longer want this separation between myself and my people. I, I, I no longer want just one high priest to come and see me once a year. No, I, God, have bridged the gap between myself and people through Jesus Christ. And anyone is welcome to come and have communion with God in the Holy of Holies. And this is the same God that we worship every Sunday while we look good in our leather denim jackets sipping on our Jesus lattes. Now don't get me wrong, do I think it's wrong to have coffee, coffee shops, drinking coffee in church? Do I think it's wrong to wear leather denim jackets? with the holy jeans to church? Of course not. In fact, church is the place where anyone can come from any background, any race, any financial status, wherever you're at in life, you can come to one place and you can enjoy the communion of God. You can enjoy the communion with other people. This is a place to have fun. This is a place to serve. This is a place to learn and to grow. And what better way to start that off than with a latte? But here's where I was convicted. I was listening to a Desiring God podcast the other day and, and a listener asked Pastor John Piper, how should we dress for church? And this was his reply. Whether you dress to kill on Sunday morning, or you're dressed to kill those who are dressed to kill, or whether you close your eyes earnestly while singing the doxology, or casually sip your latte while singing holy, 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 or whether you sit with a respectful posture, or slouch with indifference, or whether you keep your hands to, to yourself, or you rub the back of your boyfriend's neck while the pastor pours out his heart, or whether you disdain a shabby visitor or rejoice that they are welcome. All of these things and many more are shaped and guided by your vision of what God is like in this service and what is at stake here. What do you believe should be happening here? If the characteristics of God were to truly be understood by us 
for their appropriate weight, their joy, the awe and wonder that they carry, we would discern more clearly how to dress and act in worship services. Tinkering with how we dress does not come close to the heart of the matter that plagues the church. The problems are far deeper. Certain kinds of behavior and clothing are just simply symptomatic of our views of God, of worship, and of ourselves. So as I was sitting there in the drum cage looking out and judging everybody drinking their coffees, I was convicted with the fact of how apathetic my view of God had become. I came to church wearing the same outfit that I wear for every other occasion. I usually will play the drums and then go hang out backstage and chill on my phone till it's time for me to do it again, rinse and repeat, do it again the next Sunday. And I was hit with my own questions. Jeremy, are you just putting on a show? Do you know why you're here? Do you know who is here? And do you realize what we are here to do? John Piper ended the podcast with this example saying, say for instance, it was his wedding anniversary and his wife had planned a beautiful dinner at a nice fancy restaurant and she was there waiting for him in a beautiful dress. And he was coming after work, so he just had on his polo shirt with his jeans and sneakers and he showed up in that attire. Would his wife accept him? Of course. But his attire would not have been appropriate for the occasion. In the same way, does God accept a hipster chick who shows up in a leather jacket over her ripped jeans sipping on a latte just as much as he accepts a guy who shows up in a three-piece suit and a Bible? Of course, but our view of God is what makes all the difference. So the next time you go to church or the next time you pray or the next time you think about God, realize who you are sitting before. Realize who you are talking to. You are standing before and praying to the almighty God who created the universe, who put planets in motion, who just let you breathe that breath that you just took. The same God who consumed sinners with fire and who loves us with a mercy and grace that we don't deserve. And he came to die, shed his own blood for us and buy our salvation with his own life. The same God who rose from the dead is the same God who is at the service where you are sitting. It's the same God that we have access to with just one word, and that's the same God who wants a personal relationship with you. When I take a minute to just think and realize this, I, I, I say to myself, maybe I can honor God with a little more than just what I wear for every other occasion. Maybe I can put down my phone for an hour at church and just open my heart and, and listen to what God has to say to me. Maybe I can cut out some of the time that I spend doing frivolous things and spend that time with God. Maybe I can show God a little bit more of the respect and honor that he deserves. You see, it's not so much about how we show up or what we do, but rather it's more about our view of the God that we are standing before. And in turn, that view affects how we show up and what we do. So that's my question and my challenge for you today. How do you view God? So that's all I have to say for this one. Thank you so much for watching. So I'm out.